questions about a communication breakdown between the mayor's office of neighborhood safety and engagement and police in response to that mass shooting. We're taking a closer look at the city agency managing millions of dollars in federal funding to keep you safe. Government watchdog Adam Andievsky, CEO of Open the Books, joins us now to break down where that money is going. Good morning to you, Adam. Good morning, Taylor. Now, now, you found some notable findings. I want to get into compliance issues in a bit here, but tell us some of the, the, the highlights of what you found from Monsi and the, the nonprofits that are receiving money from them. So the mayor's office has doled out recently $13.4 million in additional grants to neighborhood organizations to try to curb violence in the city through the Safe Streets program. Uh, this brings in total to about $30 million from the American Rescue Act plan that have been doled out by this office of the mayor to community work over $5 million uh, uh, over three years to manage two safe streets uh, location sites in Baltimore. And then the youth advocate programs received $7.3 million for two years worth of life coaching, emergency relocation and stipends that will be paid to people over 24 years old. The real question is whether this program is, is working. It is modeled on a program that comes out of Chicago mm -hmm. called Cure Violence and the streets in Chicago aren't safe either. I think the question about where that money goes and is it working is one we constantly are asking here on Fox 45. But you also sound, found some compliance issues. Explain those to us as well. So we found three organizations, three of the smaller organizations that received in the aggregate $125,000 on this recent announced set of grants that, again, they're not in compliance with the Maryland Secretary of State charitable solicitation registration. Uh, so you've got three organizations, uh, you know, Mount uh, Green Mount West Community Center Foundation, they got 25,000, the National Alliance for Mental Health Illness Metropolitan Baltimore, $50,000, the uh, Avias Hyam uh, organization for $50,000, and their, their registrations aren't current. And so this is a real problem. Like who in the mayor's office is vetting the organization's how are those decisions being made if these organizations can't even comply with basic reporting requirements with the state of Maryland to operate as public charities? I have another uh, follow-up question here with respect to public safety. Uh, the, the curfew, the juvenile curfew that's been implemented by the mayor took effect Memorial Day weekend. There's not been a lot of traffic at those connection centers, if any. Um, what have you found with respect to the curfew, the money that's being spent, and your findings on from what other watchdogs have also uh, noted from other cities? So it's been about a half million dollars that the mayor's office has put into uh, curfew enforcement uh, this year. The Marshall Project says that curfews have little effect on crime. Look, 38% increase in uh, in property crimes this year in the city of Baltimore. Uh, there's been 5,300 uh, major crimes. We're talking, uh, you know, murders and rapes and carjackings uh, in the city of Baltimore this year. Uh, the head counts on police officers over the course of the last decade have dipped by over 500 fewer officers on the street, in the latest budget put forth by the mayor, there's been a 2.5% increase, increase in the amount of money in the police budget, but that's not going to dent the headcount. That's not going to add police officers to the street. So there's a lot on the table. Um, there's a lot of money flowing, mm -hmm. but the impacts on crime have been suspect. All right, we'll continue to follow that the windfall and follow whatever comes of that money, which we've continued to ask, but we'll, we'll stay on that. Thank you so much, Adam Jamjewski, CEO of Open the Books.